Suppose initialization of stack. We have to initialize the member of a stack. For example, I'll take class stack having data member, public, private, protected are the access specifier that we can use for the implementation. So if I take a public, that means that member can be accessible throughout the program. Publicly, I'll initialize the member, but in C++, it is not possible to initialize the member inside a class. For that purpose, we have to use one of the feature or characteristics of a C++ that is constructor. Now, constructor is a member function where we can initialize the member. For example, constructor stack, where we can initialize top is equal to minus 1. So, initialization is only permitted inside a class. Without initialization, we cannot use top because already we write top is equal to minus 1. That is the initial condition of a stack. So, we have to initialize the top is equal to minus 1. This stack is constructor. There are three certain characteristics of a stack. Constructor. Constructor name should be same as a class name. That is the first feature of constructor. Second feature of constructor is constructor do not have any written type. So, constructor do not have any integer void type, written type. And third property, constructor is automatically called when we create the class object. So, when I create a class object, that time constructor get automatically called and we can initialize the member which are present inside a constructor. So, this is a basic thing for a constructor. Then we have to use these methods or the operations that we have to implement inside the program. So, I will write a function void push void pop. These are the methods. We have to check a condition whether stack is empty our stack is full. So these are members inside the class. So these are the certain operations that we have to perform on stack and these are the initialization of members. Top is equal to minus one, declaration of member as a public and there are members. Then we create a class object as when we create a class object automatically constructor get called and member will be initialized. And then when we implement this function that will be called with the help of class object. So this is a general encapsulation data inside a class. So this is called also called as encapsulation where we can encapsulate the data members and data methods. Now we can write one by one these methods outside a class. So when I write the method outside the class, that time there are again certain protocol where we need to write. For example, I want to implement one of the methods. Now the implementation method of a stack. Now we need to discuss how the encapsulated data will be utilized outside the class. We have to implement one by one all the method. As we already discussed that, how we can check the condition push and pop by inserting a data. So when I insert a data, we have to check the two conditions. Either stack is full or stack is empty. When there is nothing in the stack, that time we have to insert a data as well as we have to check the condition whether it is full or empty. So first we will write a function. stack full or empty. So if I write a function m, there is a basic protocol while writing a function outside a class. First of all, we have to write the return type, then class name, scope resolution and function name. The main aim of this scope resolution is we have to identify the function belongs to the same class. If the scope resolution is not there, then a class is get confused. The function is from which class. It may be possible that one program may consist of n number of classes. To identify the function belongs to which class, this scope resolution operator is used. Return type is utilized the value to be written by the function to that any other method for the recursive iteration. So to check the empty condition means there is nothing in a stack and we are retrieving the data. And that is not possible. So if it is not possible, then a condition is failed. So we have to write the condition that if top is equal to equal to minus 1, then it return true. Otherwise, it return false or we can say return or return 0 means when top is equal to minus 1 then nothing in the stack then it will be a stack empty means initial condition that top is equal to minus 1 that is the initial condition of a stack and if I return any type of information from that then it is not possible means top is equal to minus 1 it will return nothing so stack is empty so this is the condition we have to write when we retrieve the data similarly next is stack full condition Again, there is the same protocol that we discussed for empty condition. We have to again implement a condition full. Again, return type, return type, class name, scope resolution, and function name. 
stackful. Now stackful condition is a condition where the size is get full and we are again inserting a data. So overbound is not allowed in a stack. If the size of stack is 2, that is 0, 1, 2 and all the elements are there at the respective index while top is pointing to the topmost location and we are again inserting some information that time it is not allowed if it is not allowed means we cannot again perform push operation so in that case we have to check the condition stack is full so when the stack full condition will be occur when top is equal to size so if top is equal to size minus 1 then it return to else it return False. Means, if top is reached to the max size of the stack or the max size of array, then we cannot add any other element. That is the array bound condition, is, array bound is full for a stack, so we cannot add any other element. So it will be written true, otherwise it will be false. So these are the two basic conditions to check whether stack is full or stack is empty. Now we are going to actually insert in a particular information. Now we know that initially stack is empty, there is nothing in a stack where top is equal to minus 1. Now initially top is equal to minus 1, when the first time I insert a data, that time we have to check one of the condition out of these two. So as I have told you that, when I insert a data, that time we have to check whether the stack is full. And when I remove the data, that time we have to check whether the stack is empty. So the condition is, first we have to insert the data. So return type of the function, class name, scope resolution and then name of the function. We can pass n number of parameter to the function, that is again user choice. If he wants to send uh, information from the function, then he can send. For that purpose, we have to change the data type of the function. Instead of it's a void, we have to change as an integer. So it returns something from the function. So while inserting a data inside a stack, first of all, I have to ask the user what sort of information he has to enter inside a stack. So initially, we know that top is equal to minus 1, and user wants to insert uh, this first information 10 inside the first index, and then top will be incremented by. 0. Instead of minus 1, it will be incremented as a 0. So top is incremented by 1 as good as the element I inserted in a stack. But we have to check the condition whether it is full or not. So we can write if not stack full. Means if it is stack is not full, then and then we can insert an element, otherwise we cannot insert an element. So I will ask the user that what information he has to enter inside a stack. So we will write a statement see how enter the data. that you want to insert inside a stack and then actually read the data c and name of the variable that we already consider that may be x as a variable where we have to store that actual information 10 so we read the data 10 from user that is x once we read the data then we can add that data inside a stack so i will write a of a of top is equal to x. So in that index the element will be inserted. But initially top is equal to minus 1. So first of all we have to increment the top and then add an element. So first we need to write top plus plus and then add an element inside a stack. So by writing this two statement the element again inserted in a stack one by one element will be inserted. When this condition is false then it will come out of the loop. We cannot insert the element. So we can write else case that stack is full. So we cannot insert any type of information inside a stack. This is the push operation of a stack. Similarly, we can write a pop operation of the stack. The element in a stack, so 10, 20, 30 are get inserted in a stack and top is pointing to the second index which is the topmost location of the stack. Now we need to remove one by one element from the stack. So when I remove the element, no need to ask the user which information has to be deleted because stack is a data structure, linear data structure where last and first are. The element which is inserted last will be removed first. So this first last element will be removed first. So no need to ask any type of information from user. So we can write the method return type is void, class name is stack, and its scope resolution and function name is pop. No need to pass any type of parameter to the function. We can directly read the index of a data and that data will be pop. But before that, we have to check condition that whether it is empty. If it is empty, we cannot remove any type of element. But if it is having some data, then and then we can remove the element from the stack. So we have to check whether stack is empty. If not empty, then and then 
it is possible. So if it is not empty, we can pop the information C out and directly we can use the top index because we know the top is continuously increment when we add the data. So I can write the information which is deleted A out top A is the size of sorry A is the stack. I mean top is the variable where the it actually points and then we can decrement top by 1 instead of writing top minus minus we also write top is equal to top minus 1 so every time this code will execute that time we first print the value which is deleted from stack and then top will be decrement by 1 so that the top index is decrement by 1 and it will point to the previous element similarly this method will execute and at the last when 10 will be removed from the stack, then top is equal to again minus 1. And when it is minus 1, we know that it's a stack empty. So we cannot remove any element from the stack. So this is a basic implementation using array of a stack.